Hey, welcome back to your Twin Cities Live. Chocolate and peanut butter, bacon and eggs, spaghetti and meatballs. These foods just go together. <laughs> like a lamb and a tuna fish. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Another movie reference. I'm sorry. It's okay, good. listen. For the, I know. For the next 12 days, we're basically going to take DC comics and Marvel comics and <laughs> bridge them together. It never happens, okay? It's the Minnesota happening. Beef Council and the Minnesota Pork Board are actually going to come together. Right for 12 days of grilling. It's epic. We're gonna start things off with beef today though. So Chef John Van House is here with a recipe. For this cut of beef, Chef, I had never heard of before. I had to look up where it came from. Terrace Major, yeah. And it was a whole, and then, you know, Ben's doing the whole anatomy lesson of where it is <laughs> yeah, in the body. Yeah, kind of, I'd at least heard of it, it sort of. It looks great, it looks super tender. What is it? Uh, so people call it a mock tender sometimes. Um, it is a Terrace Major muscle, which does come out of the shoulder. Um, the nice part about it is though that the animal doesn't really use it too much for locomotion, locomotion which is when collagen develops. Mm. And collagen is what makes meats tough. Okay. Like, for instance, a brisket. You don't cook it long enough, the collagen hasn't Broken down. rendered. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really tough. This doesn't have that much of it, so it lends itself really, really good to grilling. So High just like a human being, because this is what we were talking about earlier, yeah. the, the Terry's muscle is kind of like back here yeah. on a human being. But like you were saying, on a cow, because they're on four legs, they don't use that muscle the way we use exactly. that muscle. Yeah, so, so that's why it's ten, more a tender. Human being, it was exactly. Very easy, that's, easy. That's why, that's why the chuck, <laughs> chill out. That's why the chuck gets really big, you know, and the brisket is uh, is large because that's what's carrying the weight of. The yeah, pack. that's like the pecs, right? Exactly. That yeah, that's so like sense. the big powerlifting pecs. Got it. <laughs> so what do you do with this meat to prep it? And can you find this easily? If you can't find it, what should you use instead? So um, I, you got to have a good relationship with your with your suppliers, right? So I went to the local meat market. Right uh, two miles from my house and talk to them and they hooked me up. Cool. So it is something that you do need to find. You usually won't find this like at a supermarket or at a Costco or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why relationships are kind of important. Yeah. As far as how we're going to do it, this, they've already trimmed up nice and neat and clean for me. So all the silver skin is removed. Beautiful. If it's not, you'll see that silver skin. You do want to remove that like your oh. filet, you know, the skin off That's the like fish. the little fascia on the outside. Yes, yeah. and it's silver. It, it looks kind of silver. It's really, it takes a long time to break down. It's really inedible. So you okay. want to remove that. Yep. Um, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to take a little bit of our local sunflower oil. Sunflower like oil. Sunflower yeah. oil. Yeah. That's interesting. Right? Very good. And you said that's local sunflower oil. Correct. Smoothie Farms. Oh, I love that. Yeah, great people. They do popcorn, too. They do. They do a lot. It's so cool. <laughs> um, but we're just putting a little bit of oil on here, which is actually going to help our blackening spice um, stick to the meat better. Okay. Okay. You could do it without, but I kind of like to do it with, especially seeing as there isn't a ton of fat in mm -hmm. this cut, as you can see. Is this a spice one you made? No, I just purchased a Cajun Cool. Blend. Yeah. Um, if you're going to do blackening spice, the way that I've been taught is it's three ingredients, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and salt. That's it. That's yeah. it. But that means it's really spicy. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm taking into account my audience who just ate some of that strong <laughs> dinner, strong <laughs> Steve. Some ate sauce. more than others. Yeah, that's some true. ate more than that's others. True. So all we're going to do here is just season them up, and then I'm going to throw them on the grill. Would you wow. do a filet if you don't get this cut? I mean, is that what you're looking for? Or a filet mignon works. Yeah. Um, the problem with a filet is if you look at the the meat here um, we were you can see the muscle strands go east-west okay. right so if you get a filet mignon that's a cut steak the muscle strands go north-south okay so the a filet mignon depending on its thickness will cook a lot faster than this will so you want to know your cut yes mm -hmm. and what I'm getting at here is is with the muscle strands going east-west like I was saying where they go across mm -hmm. what's gonna happen is when those protein strands start to cook they do two things. They shrink and they exude moisture. So as it shrinks, it actually tightens up. And mm. when it tightens up, it gets smaller, right? But that tightening actually prevents heat from penetrating into the middle of the meat, creating a heat shield. Mm. Okay? So this, I picked this cut because of that. Because I wanted it to grill for a good amount of time. Like, this is going to take 20, 25 minutes. Oh, oh my God. That's still blasphemous gonna, when you're still talking about red like meat. Medium. Yeah. Um, so that's that'll allow the seasoning to blacken and get that dark color. Okay, this, so and this to, is what it looks like. So and to illustrate real like. quick, you were saying because the muscles sit this way. Yep. When you cook this top, 
it actually creates a barrier so yes, the heat it, doesn't get... it tenses up so that the inside doesn't get that the penetration of heat. If the muscle strands are going north and south when they're on the grill, up and down, the heat can the still kind of get penetrate through. penetrate in between the, the fibers. Mm. So that's how come a steak like a New York I strip mean, or a ribeye, even if it's thick, will still get well done in like 15 or 20 minutes. Whereas this, we can literally sit here and talk five minutes, have some of that wine that yeah, Ted that had, sounds great. you know, and move I on from there. Did you, I didn't know I that either. No idea. No idea. Okay. Okay, we've okay. got to show what this looks like then when you cut it up. And yes. then you're going to do this butter. And are you tossing the asparagus right on the grill, too? I am. I'm actually doing that right now. Fabulous. oil going and okay. just a little salt and pepper. Good. So we only have, like, three components to this. And that's okay because I like simple grilling. Yep. And I love that I can do all of this on the grill and I don't have to have the oven on at home at all. No, this is good. So when you cut into this steak, will you see, you'll see that difference in striations when you cut it, right? Yes, and I'll show you steak. that in just a quick second. Yeah, here. let's do it. We got about a minute left because I want to make sure that we talk about this butter because well, I feel like your fancy butter is going to make people <laughs> want to make this immediately. Yeah, they will, they will. So the butter is something I did ahead of time because you can and I, you can keep it in your fridge. You don't have to worry about having it, you know, something to prepare right away right. for a sauce or anything else. But what we're going to do here is we're going to take our, sorry guys. Yeah. And the butter has all these ingredients that you have sitting out. You yep. just mixed it with room temperature butter. So I, put I it mix in this it log. Yep, put uh -huh. it in this log, fold it in. It's in the recipe if you guys want to see it online. Easy. But I took the zest of the lemon. I don't know if you want to do that quick if you yeah. ever used a microplane. Yep, or not. I know. I, but, yeah. um, but the microplane is really nice. You don't have to chop it any further. You can see how small the zest mm -hmm. comes off. Yep. But then you use the juice of that lemon in the butter as well. And add as much or as little as you want as far as the Worcestershire and the lemon, okay? So good. Okay, John, we got to go. We got to try good. this. We're going to run out of time. We could sit here. I know, I know. We're getting a, a science experiment, so a biological ex uh, education here. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so what we're going to do then, even though the asparagus still needs a couple more minutes. That's okay, that's okay. But well, it doesn't take long. Well, okay, as he plates us up, I want to tell you that Minnesota is home to over 16,000 beef farmers and ranchers, and you can find John's recipes and more info about the Minnesota Beef Council. is all on our website, TwinCitiesLive.com. Yeah, and, and everybody, he's going to be back. He'll be back tomorrow. We have 12 days of grilling we did beef today we all learned something about the terry's major tomorrow we're going to do a pork tenderloin i believe a pork chop excuse me a boneless pork chop he's me back tomorrow with uh and with a pork. grilled potato salad okay we'll try this in a minute john thank you so much coming up next we're going to talk about the importance of staying active as we age yeah but first let's take a look at the weather brought to you by minnesota rusco hey minnesota